Hello, everyone! Welcome back to Storybook Farm in Stardew Valley, where today is actually Pierre's birthday, and not just Pierre's birthday in my imagination, and where it is also a traveling cart day, so we need to not forget that. Welcome to Wellwick's Oracle, the only show where the voice of the spirits is channeled directly to you. The spirits feel neutral today. The day is in your hands. And our weather tomorrow? Oh, we have another rainy day before the end of spring, so I have a chance to redeem myself for the very foolish mistake that I made at the end of the last episode when I took that hard-won catfish and carelessly threw it in the sail bin for Lewis to pick up. Hi, Tail Spinner. I have some good news for you. A few days ago, I made a breakthrough in my research on the local environment. Oh, that's great, Demetrius. But what does that have to do with me? I'll spare you the technical details and get to the point. You know that empty cave over there, a little ways to the west? Well, I have a way to turn it into something useful. For both of us. Tell on, Demetrius. I'm listening. I'd like to set up the cave to attract some local species. That way I can observe them in a more controlled environment, and you can harvest whatever products they produce. I can either set up the cave to attract mushrooms or fruit bats. The bats will sometimes leave fruit for you to collect. Which one would you prefer? I'm going to go for mushrooms. Mushrooms have a much more consistent schedule than fruit bats in terms of being able to collect produce, and I'm planning to plant fruit trees anyway. Also, in my experience, the fruit bat cave generally does not give very many tree fruits. You can occasionally get a fruit tree fruit, but for the most part, the fruits that the bats leave are wild forage fruits, things like salmon berries and blackberries and wild plums. And those I always have in abundance and they're not nearly as valuable. So I'm going to go for the mushrooms. All right, I'll go set it up for you right now. It shouldn't take any time at all. Thanks, Demetrius. I'm looking forward to this. Thanks for letting me do this. You're so welcome. All right. Our iron bar is ready, and so are our pickled cauliflowers. I'm trying to remember, yes, I did have enough coal to make another preserve jar, but what I did not have was the stone to do it because I left all my stone up in the mountain chest. So rather than make another preserve jar right now, since I have a lot of other things to do, I am going to go ahead and get these two going again. We need these funds for our future developments on the farm. We have some potatoes to harvest, some strawberries, more potatoes, more strawberries, and I believe the kale is also ready. Yes, I see you over there, you lonely potato. All right. Looking good, looking good. And every single one of our crab pots has given us an actual fish today and not merely trash. All right, I got every one of the crab pots baited again. Now, the crayfish are actually more valuable to sell than they are to turn into a recipe such as sashimi, which can use any fish, or um, the more advanced fertilizer that we can't make yet. So I will definitely be selling those. I'm also not saving fish for fertilizer or sashimi yet. I'm thinking I may sell, no, I, there's no need for me to sell directly to Pierre at the moment because I don't need to buy any new seeds. He does not stock summer seeds until the season changes and I can't plant any more spring seeds and have them come to maturity. I will, of course, be saving all of the strawberries. Those are not going to be sold in the bin. 
and I will save two ordinary kale for use in recipes once I get a kitchen. I have two potatoes already, but I think I may want a few more of those just because they can be used in other recipes that I, I might be more interested in than the kale. All of the rest of the potatoes and the pickled cauliflower and the kale in the bin, it's fine for us to not get those funds until later. I'm going to go ahead and do the watering now. I'll be cutting that out and bringing you back when it's done. Oh, I completely forgot. My watering can has been upgraded. Let me just show you how that works by holding down the left mouse button until the watering can charges up. I can water three rows at the same time, even from the same position, instead of having to stand in the middle and water in a circle. So this is going to go a whole lot faster, but I will still bring you back when it's finished. All of our crops have been watered, but of course we still need to water one very important thing, Arhu's bowl. Good morning, Arhu. Now, before we head down to check the traveling cart, I just want to make sure I don't have any other quests besides the Deeper in the Mine and Raising Animals quests. Raising Animals. Hmm. I don't believe that we have quite enough money yet to build our coop, and I want to make sure that we have secured everything we need for seeds before we drop 4,000 gold on Robin. But let's just check before we go out, is there anything else that I'm able to craft now that I want to go ahead and craft today? I won't need the mayonnaise machine until I have chickens. I could probably use another furnace, but I can't make that without my stone, and it's all right at the moment. Uh, likewise, the preserves jar, I need to retrieve my stone before I can build that recycling machine. I had decided that I was going to wait on the recycling machine and use this iron bar, this first iron bar, for a community center bundle instead. I can make more crab pots, but they also take iron bars. So there's nothing else that we need to craft at the moment, but I will plan to smelt some more copper and hand in that blacksmith's bundle at the community center. We'll go check the traveling cart and then swing back up this way to get the copper bar and hand that bundle in. And then we'll head up to the mines and see what progress we can make down there today. Of course, we need to not forget to stop in by Pierre's and say happy birthday to him. It's also almost the end of the week, so we're seeing a lot more forage in the areas that we haven't been to in a while. Hello, pig lady. The pig lady has a hazelnut, something that would normally not be available until fall. I'm very tempted by the peach. I'm tempted by the peach because it's something that I will not otherwise be able to get until next year. She also has two large eggs, and one of them is very reasonably priced, but it's not really going to speed up my community center progress at all to speak of, since I will be getting large eggs from my own chickens long before I have finished the rest of the community center. That's not going to be the item slowing me down. The peach, on the other hand... I would have to plant a peach tree today to get even two peaches off of it this year. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the peach. Thank you, pig lady. All right. I'm just going to swing around the lower part of the map and look for any other forage items. That way I won't have to come back here tomorrow to gather the week's forage. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot. I know, however, that I have gotten another achievement, at least one other achievement since I last talked to the hat mouse. I've gotten several. There's a watermelon band, a suester we already had, butterfly bow, and a good old cap. I'm not terribly interested in any of those at the moment. Up we go again, over the bridge. 
there's a squirrel. In a spring onions, there's another dandelion. There's some wiggly worms. One of my viewers, who happens to be an individual I gave birth to, told me the other day that it was very annoying to him when I would walk past wiggly worms and not notice them, and I told him that he should put it in the comments section, which he has not yet, but there you go, my dear. I got those wiggly worms just for you. I've probably walked past two or three without noticing them this episode, and you can tell me all about it in the comments. <laughs> Back up to the farm. That copper will be long since ready. I know this is not the most efficient use of the day to just wander around cinder sap forest looking for forage. But it's pleasant. We won't have very many more days for spring forage. I will start another copper bar smelting. Just one though because I want to save the other eight coal for another preserve jar. Put away the copper and put away the fiber. I think I will be selling and I will put away the peach. I don't want to accidentally sell that. I will keep a dandelion in case I get another quest for one. Everything else can go in the bin except the daffodils. I took those out of my sale bin. I almost walked out without a birthday present for Pierre. Oh, I was going to give him a daffodil. That's right. He doesn't need a quality daffodil. I don't. Unless this happens to be a quality daffodil. No, it's not. Keeping my eye open for hidden worms. It's almost time for the clinic to close. Let's just check if Harvey's in there quickly. I don't need to talk to him every day quite as urgently now that the flower dance has passed. And I think maybe Friday's the day he does his grocery shopping anyway. He was probably in Pierre's. Double check the calendar. Yes, it is indeed Pierre's birthday today. And there's a new quest on the board. Marnie would like a topaz. I don't know whether I have any in my chest right now. I seem to remember selling a bunch at Clint's the other day. If you want to hang out in my apartment, that's okay with me. I live above the clinic. Harvey, you're really taking things to the next level after the flower dance. Wow. I was just up there, and you weren't there, so I came looking for you, because hanging out in your apartment when you're not there isn't a whole lot of fun. And now that it's 3 o'clock, I won't be able to get into the building. Wow, I just realized it's Friday. Abigail, do you ever look at a calendar? Sometimes I totally lose track of time. Yeah, like every week. Hey, Pierre, how are you? Maybe a few of my seeds will spruce things up. Maybe a few of my dandelions, not a few, maybe a dandelion will help you have a happy birthday. A birthday gift. Oh, that's very kind of you. I love it. He doesn't really love it. No heart appeared above his head, but he does like it. And that's the best we can do this first spring. Wait for Abigail to get far enough away. We got a Joja Cola from the trash. Hmm, wonder who was throwing that out. Was there anything else I needed to do in town? I don't think so. So we will run by the community center, put our bars in the blacksmith's bundle, and then head up to the mines. So for the adventurer's bundle, we need slime, bat wings, solar essence, or void essence. We're not down low enough to get anything except the slimes yet. The Geologist Bundle, we need a Frozen Tear and a Fire Quartz, which, again, we haven't gotten quite low enough to find yet. But we have completed the Blacksmith's Bundle. And we shall be rewarded, most suitably, with another Furnace. 
if I get a significant amount of coal, we'll go ahead and smelt more copper bars for crafting, probably crafting more tree tappers specifically. Otherwise, I will be saving my coal for making more preserve jars. Hi, Robin. How are you? You've met my son, Sebastian, right? He lives downstairs. I have met him a few times. Yes. He's a little shy, but I'm sure he'll warm up to you if you're nice to him. I've tried to be. Hi, Demetrius. I'm excited to see what happens with that cave, aren't you? I am indeed. I'll be checking it out tomorrow. I hope you're pleased with the work I did. I'm sure that it is excellent work, Demetrius. You do give the impression of being a very conscientious fellow. Linus is not out by the lake at the moment. And we'll leave a few things in our mining chest. We don't need to bring the Joja Cola or the daffodils or our fishing rod or our axe down the mines. I'm going to bring our stone and of course I will trade the scythe for the sword. We're still well off the number of slimes that we would need for that community center bundle, but the bat wings, once we get low enough, will be coming quite rapidly. I forgot the torches and I think I'm down to the dark levels or close to down to the dark levels. The bat wings will be coming quite quickly and we only need one each of the solar essence and void essence to complete the bundle. I'm glad that I brought those torches because we are indeed in the dark levels and the monsters that are unique to these dark levels are also extremely difficult to see. They blend into the shadows. So we will be holding a torch while we move around and we will be placing the torch while we break rocks. I find uh, these 10 levels between 30 and 40 to be really the most annoying levels in the mines. I generally try to get through them as quickly as I can and then I don't come back. All right, let's place a torch so that we can fight in the light. And oh, hello, bat. As I said, the bats will be coming thick and fast once we get down to the bat levels. And I said that not realizing that we had indeed gotten. Now, where did that rock golem go? I'm not sure. Oh, good. There's a ladder that we can just go down without having to break any more rocks. That is always a relief. And there's a little bit more light in this area, so I will break rocks in this area. We will definitely be using rocks for crafting um, ladders if we need them and preserve jars. And I probably won't make a third furnace since I did get that second furnace from the community center bundle. So we don't need rocks for that. But there's always, always a use for more rocks. Getting a little dark here. Uh, let's put you there. I would love a ladder anytime now, game. Anytime you want to give me a ladder. All right, I'm going to take back my torch. I don't have so very many of them that I can just leave them lying around. Keeping an eye on the time, we have the ability to make a ladder or two if we need to. I'd rather not if we don't have to. I would much prefer to use our rocks for making other things that are more useful for us. But I feel strongly enough about making progress out of these dark levels as quickly as we can that I will use a ladder if I need to, if it's starting to get so late that there's no other way to guarantee our um, ability to unlock the next level. Are there any more rocks to break over here? I don't see any. I think we got all of the ones over there. And we still, oh, there's our ladder. I should have explored more thoroughly before I broke all those rocks. Would have saved a lot of time. This is the rock golem. And you can see how they do blend in with the shadows quite a bit when, um, when they're not right against a torch or within the, the range of the torchlight. I need to eat a few salmon berries now since I'm 
quite low on energy and it's a little bit tempting to craft a cherry bomb and put it where there is a large number of rocks and just see if we don't get a ladder that way. Not something that I intend to do frequently because my coal is too precious to me right now. The copper I don't mind spending on cherry bombs at the moment. I do have a good amount of copper, but I find the coal far too hard to come by and far too precious. Precious. We did make it to level 35. The ladder is unlocked. That is going to be all the mining we do right now. I'm going to return the torches and the sword to our chest. Take out all of the things that we put away in there earlier. We got five quartz, 14 copper ore, two coal, and four geodes, as well as a bat wing. I'll leave the bat wing. I thought we'd gotten more than one bat wing. And I guess we didn't. I'm going to go ahead and use up a little bit of energy with a few casts into the mountain lake before we head home since it's not yet um, that late and see if we can't get another largemouth. Oh no, you're a carp. <laughs> you are not a largemouth bass. No way, no how. With the carp, once you've leveled up your fishing past about level two, you don't even need to move the bar with the fish at all in order to catch it, which is why in my first playthrough, I think my fishing leveled up to 10 entirely with carp and crab pots. And it took a very long time to get to level 10 that way, actively fishing and learning how to give little, little taps to your mouse so that you move the bar without moving it wildly is a much more effective way to do things. All right, it's after 11 and I do want to craft another preserves jar and get it started before we end the day. Linus is probably in his tent right now. And I'm going to give him a salmon berry. Hi, Linus. Please don't destroy my tent. Linus, I would never do that, except possibly by accident if I misclicked on a cherry bomb when I meant to be giving you a salmon berry and placed it. But I would not do that on purpose. And I don't have any cherry bombs in my inventory right now. So that kind of mishap is just impossible. It's happened before. I'm really sorry to hear that, Linus, but I, I am a friend. This is a great gift. Thank you. I'm glad that my offerings of salmon berries can help restore your faith in humanity. Not everyone is a tent-destroying hoodlum. And I hope that it's not Sebastian who's off destroying the tent. Let's just take a quick peek into the cave. There are the mushroom growing planters that Demetria set up for us. They, of course, don't have any mushrooms in them yet. I will refill the furnace and put away the geodes and the copper bar. Oh, I should place this furnace as well. I will keep the Joja Cola in case of a quest. And I will also make another preserve jar. And grab a cauliflower to put in it. We're almost through our cauliflower, but we will be harvesting a few more, I hope, and pray we will be harvesting a few more before the end of the season. They have two more days of growth. I think that will be enough. I will be very, very sad if our misjudgment in handing in the watering can to Clint right before the flower dance ends up keeping us from getting our crop 
that that will be very very sad I can't smelt any more copper until I get more coal I'm not going to be buying it at this point in the game so we will need to continue to progress down the mines if we want more copper at all and the fish have gone into the bin I'm just going to rearrange my inventory the way I prefer to have it Keep the gifting daffodils down there. And it's time for bed. Good night, Arhu. We did level up our farming with that harvest today. And now I need to make a decision. The typical route that most players take who want to maximize their income is tiller. It increases the value of your crops and it also leads to the artisan profession, which drastically increases the income that you can get from things like preserves jars and kegs, which we have not unlocked yet. It's by far the easiest way to make a lot of money in Stardew Valley. And that's why we're going to be a little bit contrary and we're going to go with Rancher. Even though we have no animals yet, we will be getting animals. And when we do... Rancher is going to lead to the shepherd profession, and I intend to get a barn full of sheep eventually because I like sheep and I like wool, and I think that's going to be a slightly different direction to take the farm than the typical plant uh, as many high value crops as you can and then keg them all and turn them into wine and roll in the dough. So that's the plan. We've leveled up our fishing as well. I'm not going to go with Trapper. I did that during my first playthrough because I couldn't fish worth two cents and crab pots were the way to go as far as I could see at that point. But I'm better at fishing now and I have been selling a fair number of fish. So we'll be going with Fisher Profession. Over 5,000 gold from our potatoes, kale, and pickled cauliflower. The pickled cauliflower, of course, is taking more than their share of that income. And 372 from fishing, 162 from foraging. Not nearly as profitable to walk around cinder sap forest looking for the last of the spring forage. But you know what? Taking a walk in the forest is good for the soul, so I'm not going to regret that. Have a wonderful day, everyone.